Welcome to Philadelphia, city of independence, the place where America's founding fathers boldly declared, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal. America's birthplace draws thousands of visitors like you to Philadelphia each year. Your visit to the Liberty Bell and Independence Hall is only the beginning. Come and see what else Philadelphia's historic neighborhood has to offer. Within easy walking distance of Independence National Historical Park, explore some of America's finest original homes and first houses of worship. Learn more about a diversity of ancestors at one of Philadelphia's many history museums. Join us now for a quick introduction to some of the historic neighborhood's many hidden treasures, most of them within a 10-minute walk of Independence National Historical Park. Then, be sure to pick up a map and brochure and discover for yourself America's most historic square mile. Go beyond the Liberty Bell and learn how people really lived during revolutionary times. How they worked and how they played, where they danced and where they prayed. From the beginning, Philadelphia was a unique colonial experiment. William Penn's Charter of Privileges guaranteed freedom of worship to all who were willing to try their luck in a new land. So they came, the poor and persecuted of Europe, to Philadelphia, creating a diversity of races and religions seen nowhere else in colonial America. And while religious terror swept through Europe, Houses of worship in every denomination were soon sprouting in the city of brotherly love. Visit Old First Reformed Church, where the German Reformed denomination in America was first organized. Or St. George's Church, the birthplace of Methodism in America. Even Catholic churches, St. Joseph's and St. Mary's, were tolerated here. The only place in all of British North America where mass could be celebrated publicly from the 1730s until independence. The historic neighborhood is home to the second oldest Jewish congregation in America and the largest Quaker meeting house in the world. It was here in Philadelphia that the American Episcopal Church was born under the guidance of Bishop William White. And here the dynamic preacher Richard Allen founded a new denomination at Mother Bethel, the first African Methodist Episcopal Church in the world. Religious liberty, the bold experiment of Philadelphia, gave birth to an American ideal that all of us should have the freedom to be ourselves. In Philadelphia, the world's first modern democracy was born from the radical idea that the people could govern themselves. It all began here at Carpenter's Hall in the fall of 1774, when Patrick Henry gave voice to a bold new idea. Government is dissolved. Where are now your landmarks, your boundaries of colonies? I am not a Virginian, but an American. No one knew where all this treasonous talk would end. By the spring of 1776, Samuel Powell, mayor of Philadelphia, played host to a growing revolution. In these elegant rooms, John Adams and the other members of the Second Continental Congress debated the pressing question of independence while enjoying the Powell's extravagant hospitality. By June, Thomas Jefferson began drafting the Declaration of Independence in the two upstairs rooms he rented from Jacob Graff, while the Continental Congress fought to decide what was best for their country and what was best for themselves. By the night of July 4th, Philadelphia printer John Dunlap 
received a copy of the Declaration approved by Congress. Independence had finally won the day. He worked long into the night printing the document. Soon it would be read in towns throughout America. Now, there was no going back. In the city tavern, as in taverns across the colonies, the people turned political. Ordinary citizens gathered to hear the latest news and take sides. Loyalist or patriot, a question began to tear them apart. Sitting here behind a pillar in the low-rent pews of Christ Church, the young widow Betsy Ross watched and prayed as war came to Philadelphia. Like many colonial women, Betsy became a revolutionary in her own way. By boycotting tea, making ammunition, and running family farms and shops, women patriots gave their energy and support to the American cause. Jacob Duche, minister of Christ Church and St. Peter's, had lived his entire life in Philadelphia, but he felt he had a sacred allegiance to his king. When he made the painful decision to leave, he lost his home, his community, and his beloved work. But loyalists who stayed behind risked even more. In Elfris Alley, one of the most grisly stories of revenge occurred. When the British Army captured Philadelphia in 1777, the loyalist Abraham Carlyle took a job working as keeper of the gate on the northern edge of the city. But when the British Army withdrew less than a year later, Carlyle was left to the rage of returning patriots. He was convicted of treason and hanged, here in his own courtyard, for aiding the British cause. Even before independence, Philadelphia was well on its way to becoming America's premier city. Benjamin Franklin and his colleagues made certain of that, creating America's first learned society at the American Philosophical Society, first public hospital at Pennsylvania Hospital, and first fire company, whose history is preserved in an authentic firehouse at the Fireman's Hall Museum. With one of the largest collections of original homes in America, the historic neighborhood offers a rare glimpse into the lifestyles of early Philadelphians. Enter the elegant world of the intellectual and social elite through the home of Bishop William White and enjoy the modest simplicity of the middle-class Quaker home of John and Dolly Todd. Take a walk down Elfris Alley, the oldest continuously occupied residential street in America. Here, the home of three women dressmakers and a chairmaker next door, capture the world of the working class. The international reputation of Dr. Benjamin Rush and the surgical skill of Philip Singh Physic made Philadelphia an important center of medical education. The Pennsylvania Hospital opened its famous circular room where Dr. Physic performed surgery by daylight without anesthetics, antibiotics, or understanding of infection. Dr. Physic was known for his ability to work quickly while strong attendance held the patient down. The home of Dr. Physic, restored to the grandeur of the early 1800s, typifies the federal period in Philadelphia. This elegant age is preserved in the collections of architectural drawings and interior designs at the Athenaeum of Philadelphia. With the coming of peace and prosperity, Philadelphia blossomed into the center of science, culture, and finance in America. Mass immigration in the middle of the 19th century changed the face of Philadelphia. At Independent Seaport Museum, experienced the journey as new immigrants did. The hard bunks, the confusion of languages, the hopes and dreams that the city of brotherly love might be the gateway to a new life in America. At the Atwater Kent Museum, learn how these immigrants fueled the workforce 
that made Philadelphia the workshop of the world. Or explore the past of your own ethnic heritage at one of Philadelphia's many cultural history museums. Today, Philadelphia's historic neighborhood still represents a vital part of this cosmopolitan city. It celebrates our ethnic diversity. It preserves and interprets who we are and where we came from. It teaches us about ourselves and honors those who came before us. So, now that you're in the neighborhood, take the time to discover America's most historic square mile. Go beyond the Liberty Bell and take a walk through time in Philadelphia's historic neighborhood.